we always know best how to heal ourselves, how to move forward, how to we expand. Do. We do. In fact, we're really the only ones who know. Absolutely. It's all inside. And you know? everyone's guidance is well-meaning, but we really have to listen. We have to take it in and decide for ourselves if that's what we want to do or not. There are all kinds of changes that people make in their lives. I've done before and after healing sessions, before and after mm -hmm. breath work, um, before and after he uh, all kinds of healing, Reiki, so there is a definite shift, even within like an hour and a half session. Wow. There is a definite shift. And these can be done for people of all ages. Also, I've done paintings for people that have passed and for their family members who might want a documentation of their energy, of their loved one. And I do that from a photograph. So these can be done from a photograph. Oh, wow. uh, people at a distance send me the photograph and I create the painting and then send the painting back with the photograph. So, wow, what a trip. That's how I've done them for people all over the world. You know, you'd mentioned after, like, doing it after healing. I know you had talked to, um, earlier before we were doing the interview about working with the wand, working yes. with your wand. Tell yes. us a little bit about that because these okay. wands um, are amazing. So, yes. yeah, tell us a little bit about well, that. Well, I represent a company from Singapore who have, uh, have produced uh, an amazing energy wand that is called zero point energy, which is total balance, total peace. And the wand, when it is uh, used in a circular motion, reminds the body of its divine blueprint. It brings the body back to its true knowing of self and of its uh, wholeness and wellness. And so recently I had the opportunity of doing a before and after spiritual portrait for someone who was wanted for an hour and 10 minutes, which is a little longer than most sessions, but she was really ready for that. The wanding can assist it with physical um, problems, pain, and also with uh, emotional issues that might come up. And so we did this session, and then we did a follow-up spiritual portrait that was profound and very, very expansive, very expansive and very beautiful. Wow, excellent. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that sounds so cool. It is. It's such a blessing and such an honor to be able to do this work. And you know, we keep talking about this visionary art. It is very visual. It's art. <laughs> but there's another whole layer to it which surprised me, because I'm not a very visual person. I mean, I get it. I look at that painting. It's beautiful. It's me. You know, it's just my essence of who I am. But there's another sense. I'm very kinesthetic. I'm very feeling guy. And, mm -hmm. And I felt it from beginning to end, from the second we put our hands to the to the chat that we had, mm -hmm. and down to while you were painting it. It's it's it, it's just such a feeling experience for me. Even yes. when I look at the painting, yes. I get a sense of who I am. Wonderful. I don't just see it out in front of me. I Wonderful. can feel it. So yeah, Wonderful. what a gift. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's it's a an amazing experience, and it's a an energy exchange that is quite profound. Yes. Well, thank you for saying that. Sure. So Barbara, how do these spiritual portraits really help somebody? I know it's all about color and color is all about energy and vibration. So talk a little right. bit about that. Right. Each color that I see has a particular, well, vibrational pattern or essence to it. And so when I see a high energy color, um, like a red or an orange, uh, that tells me one thing. And then I, if I see a, a violet or a gold, that will, might tell me something else. So uh, most everyone watching, I would believe, is familiar with the chakra system. And so the, the energy colors that radiate from our lower chakras are the warm colors, the red, orange, and yellow. And it's nice to see in a pattern, it's, it's very um, confirming to see as many colors as possible. In people that have for people that have been on a spiritual journey for a long time, I might see more of the violets and the blues. And um, But for a person who's very well balanced, and I think you'll see that in, in yours, there are the warm colors, the cool colors, and there's a connection to the earth as well as to spirit. And I see that a lot in, in patterns. Um, sometimes I see a lot of light. Other times... Um, I'll see a lot of uh, connection to the earth. It might come through as the browns and the oranges and the reds. Mm. It just depends. But color in itself has been used over the centuries for, for healing. I know um, in prisons, uh, people have painted, the, the uh, officials have painted the walls pink to calm the uh, anger level or the aggressive level. 
uh, blue is used as a calming color. Um, I would say never dress children in red when the, you're about to put them to sleep because it's such a high energy color, it may affect their sleeping patterns. Uh, the colors of the rooms that we live in, the clothes that we wear, it all has an effect on our being, on who we are, because it is all vibration and it is all energy. So color can be used in many, many, many ways. Perfect. And that all comes from a deep place within us. You know, the colors that we choose to wear might work one hour or one day and might not be the right colors the next day. And we wear the colors that we need. We surround ourselves with the colors that we can benefit from, hopefully. I know sometimes I use color in clothes to get out of my comfort zone. You know, I'm feeling a certain way and I'm, I'm noticing I'm moving towards that beige shirt in the closet and I'm like, you know what? I need to be energetic different. today. Yeah. I'm going to put on that this bright blue shirt today, you know, and it okay. shifts everything, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, recently I changed my hair color because I wanted to brighten up my life, and it really made a difference. It really made a difference. So in whatever little ways, big ways, doesn't matter. Whatever works. You know, Barbara, this seems like such a passion for you. I know it's a wonderful gift and you're doing wonderful things with it. And it seems like such a passion for you. So mm -hmm. could you just talk about it a little bit? Like talk from your heart about the work that you do and your philosophy, philosophy Absolutely. about the work? Absolutely. You mentioned the word passion. And I believe very strongly that that's what life is all about. Expressing our passion. Whatever it might be. Uh, gardening is a creative passion. Um, designing a home, designing clothing, it can be any number of things. Raising a family can be very done very passionately. So if we can get in touch with what brings us that joy, that's our passion. And I am passionate about my work, I, absolutely. I'm a reti semi-retired art educator, and I'm passionate about the children that I work with. They're teenagers, and I'm passionate about it. I love them. Sometimes very, very challenging, but I'm there for a reason. Um, so the passion that goes into the artwork that I create helps me, assists me in being my authentic self. If I am creating, if I am there for someone as an intuitive guide, as a life guide, and creating a painting for them, or if I am just in my studio, creating a painting, I'm connecting with that part of me that says, yes, mm -hmm. this is what I want to be doing right now. This is who I am. This is my authentic self. And it's the way I'm being. And when we're in that being place as our authentic self, then we start to radiate and we start to heal and we start to shine and glow. If we shut down, as many people do, because of life circumstances or such, we start shutting down our passion and our authentic self, then it will start expressing with toxins in our body or illness or, uh, or you know, some kind of disease. Right. So it's very important, whatever the passion is, whatever the, the heart direction is, find it use it, express it. Even if it's only a few minutes a day or a week. You know, if you spend an hour in your garden a week, that's important. Or if you spend time, specific time with your children, that's important. It's a passion. It's very, very essential to growing families, harmonizing families. So whatever it might be, uh, to get in touch with that passion and express it as your authentic self. I have a friend who's a weaver. When she's weaving, she's in a place of bliss and harmony and oneness. Mm -hmm. And if we can find that place, then we also can discover our gift. So I think it's so important that you bring that up. We all need to be living our passion. We need to Absolutely. be completely self-expressed and authentic. Mm -hmm. And the, the greatest part about that is when you're being self-expressed, when you're being authentic, you actually serve not only yourself better, but you serve everybody Absolutely. better. Mm -hmm. Nobody's fooled when we're acting out something that isn't that really isn't who really we are. Us. Well, we're not here to judge one another. Right. We're definitely not here to do that. And if we do, then that's our problem. It's not the other person's problem. They're expressing themselves. They're having a great time. But if we are in judgment, then that's our problem. 
And then if the person that's judged is in judgment about being judged, then that's their problem. That's their situation to take a look at. 